This video is all about the four and a half thousand dollar PC that I'm buying to replace my current gaming and video editing rig. I'm gonna take you through the specification, what parts I've chosen, why I've chosen them, and how the system started off as a really boring black box and ended up as a beautiful tempered glass and RGB light vest. Okay, that's enough of the flashy intro. What's kind of cool though, wasn't it? <laughs> I did, I really enjoy putting that together. Uh, so let's start off with what I'm replacing. And uh, my current PC, I originally bought this back in June of 2015. And it was based on uh, an, an i7 uh, 4790K. Now this is a fourth generation Haswell chip. And at the time I bought this, right, I was not rich. <laughs> I was far from rich. Uh, to put this in context, in the previous year, I had made, what, around $4,000 on YouTube, like, in the year. So, so this was, at the time, like, a major, major investment for me. And I don't think I'd ever spent more than, like, 400, 400 pounds on a, on a PC before. Now, before I go any further, I have to say a massive, massive, massive thank you to my Patreon supporters. Because without my Patreon supporters, I could not do what I do. Uh, I just, like, th this $4,500 PC that we're talking about, there is no way that I could afford to upgrade my equipment like that without the direct support of my Patreon supporters. So to every single one of you, past and present, a big, big thank you. Uh, the... The, the dollars that I get every month from you guys, you wouldn't believe how important that is to me. And by the way, because of the way PC prices work in the, in the UK and the US, I'm gonna use pounds and dollars interchangeably because the exchange rate at the moment is about uh, 125. So uh, one pound is like $1.25, but we pay like 25% more tax. So it works out as pounds for dollars. So I'm, I'm gonna use those interchangeably. So, and, bit of and plus I used to live in the States, so I tend to do that anyway. So this was uh, air-cooled with uh, a Noctua U12, which was awesome. This allowed me to overclock this to its turbo speed. This is a four gigahertz chip with a turbo of 4.4. And I run this uh, permanently overclocked to 4.4 gigahertz all the time. And this, uh, this Noctua air cooling allows me to do that. Now that's not a big overclock. Uh, you see these clocked much higher than that, but but yeah, that's good. That's that's good for, for air cooling. It's fine. It doesn't push it too far. It never it never gets very warm. Uh, and then this was pretty much MSI influenced this build. So an MSI motherboard, MSI GeForce GTX uh, uh, 970. Now I already had that card. Uh, in my in my previous PC, so I, I was kind of reusing that card, and I was looking to upgrade the video card at some time in the future. And uh, and it took it took what almost eighteen months before I did that. And this is what this is exactly what I have now. So this was the upgraded card. So I went from a GTX nine seventy to uh, a ten eighty. And at the time, because I was because I was really on a budget. I mean, for like. You know, this is this is like half what I made of, on YouTube the previous year. So yeah, I was I was trying to cut corners wherever I could, and I really wish that I hadn't cut this corner. I could have got a 1080 Ti at the time. Um, they were out, but I was like, uh, can I can I? I think it was going to be like another at least another 200 bucks for um, for a 1080, and I was like, yeah. Uh, for, for a 1080 Ti, and I was like, yeah, I'll, get, I'll, I'll just get the 1080 for now. Uh, and thinking that, like, in a couple of years I'd upgrade. But of course, with the uh, the current situation with RTX cards, oh my God, I wish that I'd got a 1080 Ti, because I would stick with that. But hey, you know, hindsight's always 20-20. Uh, the, uh, the case, at the time, I think 
it was pretty universally agreed that the Fantex N3 Pro was like the best budget case out there. Uh, I mean, Fantex really kind of revolutionized the market um, when, they, when they started coming out with their cases. Uh, they have kind of fallen behind the curve these days, but, uh, but we'll talk more about that when we get into, when we get into the, the, the current build. And then I was, I, I, I put in a thousand watt power, power supply. Now, to be honest, for this rig, like, I mean, I think probably a 500 watt power supply would have been like more than enough, but I wanted plenty of headroom to maybe go SLI in the future uh, because I didn't know how this was gonna deal with my gaming requirements. As it turned out, the 1080 has been absolutely fine for, for, for the gaming that I do. I don't tend to play like, it's not like I'm trying to play uh, first person shooters at 120 FPS. So I don't really need anything more than that at the moment. What I found I was lacking on was pure CPU power because the kind of games that I play, games like City Skylines, Transport Fever, these are games where it's not the graphics that's gonna be your limiting factor, it's gonna be your CPU. So I found, over the, over, especially over like the last 18 months, that I am sorely lacking in, uh, in CPU power. So that's what I wanted to boost up. Um, I, I have thought several times about boosting up my, my RAM because I'm only running like 16 gig uh, and I should really be running at least 32 uh, for the video editing side. But I've, I've kept putting it off thinking, you know what, I'm going to upgrade my PC. I'm going to upgrade my PC. So I'm still stuck with, uh, with 16 gig. So that's one of the big things that I'm looking forward to when I, when I upgrade because 16 gigabytes is a, is a hell of a limitation when you're, when you're doing video editing. This thing here, so I've got I've got all my uh, I've got my operating system and all my games on uh, a Samsung 860 Evo one terabyte, uh, which I currently am about 75% full on after what three years. So that that was perfect, and I've got to say that's that was the best thing I've ever bought. Uh, this thing has been absolutely awesome. And I got it as, a, this was a real bargain at the time. I got it for 280, 280 pounds. I think the, the, the retail price on that was like around 370 at the time. I got it on a, I think it was an Amazon Prime sale or something. Um, so, and I, as soon as, that was the first SSD that I'd ever got. And that just sold me on SSDs. And for anybody out there who isn't, who hasn't got an SSD in their, in their PC, oh my God, get an SSD. SSDs are the best thing in the world, and this is going to be a big fe feature in the in the actual build, as you will see. So, and then um, I'm doing all currently doing all of my video editing on uh, on a, a Western Digital three terabyte drive, and that is horrendous. Right, this is <laughs> uh, why I have never uh, bought another SSD so that I, ha I can have, have all my games and OS on, on this one, then have another SSD as a workspace for my video editing, and then just use the, uh, just use the, the, the three, the three terabyte uh, hard drive as like a backup area. Um, yeah, I, I, should have done, I should have done this a long time ago. It's caused me a lot of pain with my video editing, to be honest with you. So there you go. Um, that's, that's, the, um, that, that's the current, system that I'm running on and it is it's a struggle I have to say uh, the performance on like I said on games like City Skylines and Transport Fever is just not good enough I'm getting down to like okay I am pushing the games but I'm getting down to like 20 frames per second and below uh, when I'm doing when I'm doing these like kind of epic builds so that's kind of the big problem that I want to solve and then the second problem is um, is the, is the on the video editing side, so improving the storage and improving the RAM. Okay, so let's look at look, look at Plan A. Now this was my kind of I, I started looking at, um, at stuff probably about six months ago, and over the period from about six months ago to about three months ago, uh, I ca I kind of had a Plan A in mind, and Plan A was gonna be uh, uh, an i7 8700K. This 3.7 gigahertz chip, six cores, rather than the, the, the quad core that I had before. This was, until recently, and we'll talk about that in a second, the, uh, the best mainstream chip. Now, why am I not going to like an X99 or X299 platform? 
you've got to look at my criteria and my criteria are like number one is stability because it's no good having like the fastest PC in the world if the darn thing is giving you problems and whilst you're not going to have like a million problems going to x99 or x299 they the platforms are not as stable and I'm talking primarily about stability with software as um, as a mainstream desktop product like uh, an 8700k it's a it's a fairly minor concern to be honest I don't think it would be a huge issue but I would rather take that that small like that relatively small performance hit and also not spend the huge extra amount of cash because to, to go up to those platforms you are literally talking about doubling the cost of the PC I mean the chips are alone the chips alone start at like a thousand bucks so so yeah it's huge uh, I'd rather take the, the the slight hit on performance for uh, for the reliability and I originally was going to go with uh, an 8700k uh, D-lid it now for those of you who don't know about D-lidding I spent hours and hours and hours and hours researching and learning about um, well, well like like everything but D-lidding especially basically there is a thermal interface material, um, TIM, thermal interface material. Um, there's a TIM in between the, the actual chip and the heat spreader, which sits on top. And the, the, the TIM that's used by uh, Intel on, on these chips and like the, the previous like three or four generations, this is a, this is a, uh, this is a seventh generation, eighth generation chip. Uh, on the previous generations, was it was kind of garbage. So what a lot of people were doing was removing the heat spreader, so de-lidding the chip, and then replacing that thermal interface material with uh, liquid metal. And that would drop your CPU temperature down anywhere between probably 6 and 12 degrees. Um, and when you're overclocking, when you're, especially when you like really want to push it, and people are pushing these things up to five gigahertz, which is that's that's kind of pushing it. Uh, you need um, you need the chip running really cool. So my idea was um, originally to get an 8700. Then I learned about the de-lidding, and I was like, well, yeah, I'm going to de-lid it. Uh, and at that point, I realised that running air cooling was not going to be a viable option. Now this is my plan A, and we'll move on to plan B, which uh, which introduces the water water cooling. And again, I was going to stick with MSI. I've had good experiences with MSI over the year, over the years, and I I have found again from a lot reliability standpoint that generally, if you if you get components from as like as many components from one manufacturer as possible, that you tend now and I do say you tend to have less compatibility issues but you know anybody that knows anything about PCs knows that's, that that is not strictly true and you can get components from the same man manufacturer that <laughs> don't like each other so anyway I was going to go with um, with a, a Z370 gaming pro carbon which is a which is a fine motherboard um, and, and to be honest there's really like if you were going this route to be honest, um, you're not going to have any issues uh, running something like this. I could have gone with um, something like um, an Asus Hero board or something like that, but um, because I was using an MSI video card, I was like, yeah, stick with an MSI motherboard. And not for any any particularly greater reason than that, uh, just because uh, I'd had a, a fairly good relationship with MSI. And then um, bumping up my RAM to 64 gigabytes, which for video editing makes a, makes a big difference. Uh, now, could I have got away with 32? I probably could have got away with 32, but I was like, nah, nah, just go the 64. Just shut up and do it because uh, it's gonna reduce my rendering times. It's gonna make my, uh, my editing um, faster and more stable. Uh, and stability, well, like when you're running on 16 gigs, stability is actually an issue. So yeah, um, and now memory speed. Now this is this is something that well, on the eighty seven hundred memory speeds are if you were going if you were going from say a thirty two hundred to uh, a four thousand megahertz then 
you, you're going to see some performance increase. And that performance increase is uh, kind of multiplied the more powerful your CPU is. The more powerful your CPU is, the more you'll see an improvement from faster RAM speed. But the sweet spot at the moment, pricing-wise, is at 3200 To go from 3200 to 3600 you'd be looking at spending an extra two to $300. Well, to, say two to $250. Uh, at which, I've got to say, I just don't, I just couldn't justify that. Now, I, if it was, if it was say thirty-two to four thousand, for an extra couple of hundred bucks, um, then I would have done it. But to get like four thousand, then you're talking like a thousand bucks, and I was just like, uh, I, I don't see the bang for buck in that. So right now, the, the sweet spot is um, is thirty-two hundred, and uh, we'll we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get into the to the final build. Uh, now storage. This was something that I, I settled on very very early. Uh, a, a 970, uh, and this is a, a, an NVMe. So this is this plugs directly into the motherboard. And uh, this uh, this particular motherboard I think has got two. I think it's got two M2 slots. So the plan was to have a couple of these uh, 970 Evos. The first one would be for operating system and games. And I, and for anybody that thinks like one terabyte, really? Uh, you would be amazed as a YouTuber how many games I have installed. I have loads and loads and loads of games. Uh, a lot of which I do play like over a, a long period of time. So like deinstalling them and reinstalling them is a pain and whatever. And obviously I would need to keep save games and stuff like that. So. Like I said, over over three years, um, I've, my current one terabyte drive is up to like 75%. So that's the first one. The second one, this will be my video editing workspace. So this is um, this is where I'm going to be uh, taking my my raw video uh, and and sound files and manipulating them with uh, with my video editing software, which is uh, Power Director for anybody who's interested. And then finally. Uh, a, a straightforward SSD, two terabyte, and just look at this, right? The the SSD that I've got on my current current PC is a one terabyte. Cost me two hundred and eighty, and that was on a big discount. Now, now you can get a two terabyte for look two seventy nine is what it actually cost me. Where you see these numbers, um, these are either the actual price that I paid or the price of components that. I didn't buy, but that was the price kind of at the time, if I think it's relevant. Um, so this this memory, I've, I've recorded that price because that was the price when I bought my uh, my actual memory, which we'll, we'll talk about subsequently. Um, some of the others I've just left as, like this is the price you can buy it at today. So, so that's the, um, that's the memory, uh, sorry, that's the, that's the storage. Now I, I will be adding some kind of hard disk storage to this, but right now I'm not sure what that's gonna be. I may just probably probably the initial thing is going to be to swap out the uh, this three terabyte uh, into the new system, just like swap it over because I've got some old drives that I can put uh, put into this system. This system will be used for other things, uh, so th this so this system is not going to be cannibalized. In, in actual fact, this video card, the uh, the 1080, in this system is going to be replaced with my old 970. And then this 1080 is going to go into the new build. Now, if you're looking at this and going, hang on a second, this is only like $2,200, right? What, what happened to the four and a half thousand dollar PC? Ah, wait, it's it's coming, it's coming. We'll get there. Anyway, so um, I, I've recorded this as zero because I'm reusing this. I've just recorded it as zero, but again, you've got to remember uh, to basically add 650 bucks onto this because even now. Uh, a 1080 card because of the whole debacle with the uh, with the RTX uh, 2080 2080 Ti stuff and the whole ray tracing thing. Uh, and if you don't know about that, like go and watch some uh, like um, uh, Jay's Two Cents, Gamers Nexus, uh, even Linus Tech Tips, and you'll hear about the whole why why ray tracing and the and the uh, and the RTX cards from Nvidia are a are an issue. They're Crazy, crazy expensive, basically. Anyway, moving on. Uh, and I was basing this on one of the best cases that's 
uh, around at the moment, the Fractal Design uh, R6. But one of the things was the, the basic R6 doesn't come with a USB uh, 3.1 um, Gen 2 Type-C port, which is, uh, that's kind of the latest um, uh, USB standard, the 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C. And I wanted a case that had that for future proofing. And originally the R6 didn't have that, but the, and, and you could buy an upgrade kit which replaced that front, front panel. But the, the upgrade kit was like 40 bucks or something, 40, 50 bucks. Uh, eventually they've come out with a, with a version which has that, that panel as standard. And it's, uh, it's like 144 bucks, which is, um, you're, you're kind of getting into premium territory. I mean, below 100 bucks, that's budget territory, 100 to 200, uh, well, so let's say 100 to 150, uh, you're in kind of medium range, and then 150 to 200, you, and 200 plus, you're looking at premium cases. Now, originally, when I, when I first thought about what case I was going to get, I was looking at the new Enthu case, the Enthu Evolve X. Now, the Evolve was kind of rubbish uh, in terms of airflow. Everything else was a really good case but the airflow was really limited. And when they came out with the, the Evolve X, there was a lot of hype around that case that they really improved it, everything was gonna be awesome. Uh, but in actual fact, when the first reviews of that case came out, uh, it was kind of really average. And it, that's a $200 case. So I wrote that off and I went back to the drawing board and I looked at a lot of cases, spent a lot of time watching uh, Gamers Nexus uh, review videos of cases. They do they do really great uh, reviews on cases. The I do have you know what I do have one issue with the with the way that they they rank cases. Like when they do their like thermal torture tests, and they're and they're ranking the cases in uh, in order of which cases are the coolest. And I mean coolest in temperature terms, not not looks. And uh, they 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 tend to do it on stock configuration. So like, what is it out of the box? Okay, I gotta say, that is not a great way to compare P uh, PC cases. For example, they recently reviewed a case that, that ships with no fans. Now that's a really, I think that's a really great thing. Personally, I think all cases should ship without fans. I think you should buy fans separately because what you get sent as standard with the case is not necessarily what you want. You'll usually add a fan or two to a case, but what if they ship you non-LED fans and you want LED fans, or they ship you LED fans and you don't want LED fans, right? You're, you're potentially spending money um, that you don't really want to spend on the case. So I, th I think fans should be completely separate from cases. But anyway, Gamers Nexus recently re reviewed a case that ships with no fans. And guess what? They actually tested it with no freaking fans. Right and surprise, surprise! It was the you know the worst performing case. Like seriously, how can you compare a case with no fans, which which I regard as a benefit against cases that are, are, are fully loaded with fans? It, it's crazy. But anyway, I digress. Which is something that Jay's Two Cents says a lot. I can see why he says it now. So anyway, uh, so so that's the case. That was the case that I was going to go for, and I was going to go with uh, another Corsair power flight, power supply. Now, this time around, I was going to get, like, I think I was going to get a 750, I think I was going to get a 750 um, watt power supply, put that in my old case, and put uh, put, uh, put the 1000 watt that I've already got into the new case. Now, again, this PC doesn't need a 1000 watt power supply. Um, I mean, a, a 750 would be plenty. Uh, but again, I always want to leave some headroom in case I want to do SLI in the future. Now, this time around, when I came to look at this, it was like, okay, uh, how much is, well, I was like, how much is an 850? An 850 was like, I think, two, uh, 125? And the, uh, in the Black Friday sales, it was on site, the 1000 was on sale at like 119. So I was like, you know what? <laughs> I'll just get the 1000. Because I think power supplies is one of those things, like the bigger the better. Um, always have lots of headroom on a power supply. Like for, for, the, for the 10 or 20 bucks extra that you're paying, I actually think it's worth spending money on a, on a power supply. So, so that's why I've got the thousand. So I've now got 2,000 watt power supplies, which is way overkill. 
but I think it's worth it. So anyway, this was plan A. Then they announced the new generation of Intel chips and I went to plan B. And plan B was uh, a 9900K. Now, now we get back to the whole de-lidding thing. So the 9900K runs hot when you overclock it. It runs really hot. Like how hot? It runs really hot. So air cooling is just not an option. It, it really isn't. If you're gonna overclock, if you're gonna run it at stock speeds, fine, you can, you can air cool it. Uh, you can even overclock it like modestly uh, with air cooling. And if you're lucky, if you win the silicon lottery, then you might be able to get, I mean, you could potentially run it at five gig on air, on, on air cooling, if you're lucky. If you're not lucky, and I'll talk to you in a couple of seconds about the, the silicon lottery. If you're not lucky, then you may end up only running your, your, your chip at like 4.7, 4.8 or something, uh, which, um, which I didn't, absolutely didn't want to risk. So Corsair, H150i Pro. This is a thick 316 millimeter uh, cooler. Uh, three 120 millimeter fans, and it's um, it's up there with uh, with the best coolers. So it's like this or um, uh, an NZXT Kraken X72. Uh, those those kind of coolers, and the difference in performance between those coolers, there's really not that much in it. And uh, I quite like Corsair. And again, like I said, if I'm buying components, if there's no advantage to buying another manufacturer, then I'm gonna stick with whatever manufacturer gives me the most components. So <clears throat> the cooler, the 150i Pro, it's a, it's a, it's a very good cooler um, with, the, with the Corsair RAM and uh, Corsair power supply. So it all kind of, kind of starts to tie together a little bit. Does it really make any difference? Like if I'd got an EVGA, power supply, EVGA power supplies are excellent. Uh, would it really make any difference? No, wouldn't make any difference whatsoever. If I used um, G-Skill uh, Sniper RAM, would it make any difference? No, wouldn't make any difference at all in this build. Uh, would it affect reliability or stability or anything? To be honest, no, wouldn't make any freaking difference whatsoever. If I used a, if I used a Kraken X72, no, nah, wouldn't make any difference whatsoever. But on the basis that it makes no difference whatsoever, I'd rather get the you know get them all from the same place. Okay, so that's that motherboard. Now the motherboard. When I started researching motherboards, for the specifically for the 9900K, um, I want to push this thing. I want to push this chip. I want this. Um, this this runs standard at 3.6 gigahertz. It has uh, a turbo mode where it will run. Uh, one of the cores, it has eight cores, it runs one of the cores up to five gigahertz. I want to be running all cores, all eight cores, on at least five gigahertz. Now, that is, that is a, a, fairly, a fairly big but achievable overclock. You should be able to, um, to overclock most 9900s to, uh, to five gigahertz. The, the problem is the silicon lottery. Now, the silicon lottery, for those of you who, who aren't familiar with this kind of stuff, the silicon lottery is the fact that when you buy a chip, not all chips are created equal, right? So you may win the silicon lottery and you may get a, a, a 9900 chip that you can run at five gigahertz on, say, 1.25 volts, which is, which is a, a fairly low voltage. Uh, and therefore, it's not too hot. It's nice and stable because you, you're not running too much power through it. And, uh, and you're going to be, you know, you're going to be laughing. You're going to be loving it. Or you could lose the silicon lottery and you could get a really bad chip that you can't, you can't realistically clock over 4.7, 4.8. Uh, you know, you, you're finding that even like, like, you know, you're getting up to over 1.3 getting up towards uh, 1.35 volts to try and get the thing up to uh, five towards five gig. And then when you're pushing that much voltage through it, the chip starts to get very hot very quickly. And, and that's the problem. So now, you know, running, using a, a 150i Pro cooler, you should be fine to run, I would think pretty much any 9900 at, at five, five gig. Uh, if, you, if you're really unlucky, you might not be able to, to get that. But the, the problem is, it's, 
even with a really, really good cooler, uh, you can find this done running really, really hot. Now, as well as that just being generally bad, right? It's going to mean that your cooling equipment, your cooler, your case fans are going to be working hard. And when your fans are working hard and your pump, uh, cooler, your cooler pump is working hard, they're noisy, right? Now, that's something that I want to try and avoid. So I want, I want to be able to run a 9900 at 5K uh, at least, at, f at 5 gigahertz at least, and I'd love to be able to get it up to like 5.14, 5.2. And I think, that, I think the highest I've heard anybody like running it at is about 5.2. People have got them up to like 5.3, 5.4 um, when, they're, when they're just like doing short tests. But I think for everyday usage, uh, 5.1, 5.2 is probably the tops. Uh, unless you're going for like extreme overclocking where you're using, you know, like extreme cooling methods like you're, you're, you're feeding an air conditioner into it or something. Anyway, moving on. Um, so yeah, so I want to run this. I want to run this um, up at, you know, five, five gigahertz plus. So for that, you need good cooling, but you also need really good power delivery. Right. Whenever you're overclocking, you need good, stable power delivery. Now there are there are four major motherboard suppliers. You've got um, Gigabyte, you've got MSI, you've got ASRock, and you've got ASUS. And at the moment, and there's a very noisy plane going overhead. Sorry about that. Uh, at the moment, Gigabyte cards for the uh, the, the Z390 series of cards have the best power delivery bar none. They just wipe the board with the, with the opposition. And in fact, the, the more you go down the cards, the, the master is the, I think it's the, uh, it's not the top card, it's not the top motherboard, it's the, it's the next one, I think. Uh, then you go down to like the, the Elite, the Pro, and then it goes down a couple of, couple of more steps. And the further you go down, the, the, the better they are than the competition because um, they're running uh, 12, f 12 full phase uh, power delivery. Uh, really good components, and it, it just gives you really good power delivery. The second thing is that the heat sinks that they've used on this, uh, on this on, especially on the master, some, on some of the other, bo the other boards, like the, um, the ASRock Tai Chi, or um, what else, like the um, the MSI uh, Meg Ace, or the I got to say the, the the Asus cards are, are really disappointing. Um, the 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 temperatures because of the heat sinks. The heat sinks they're using are just like solid aluminium heat sinks. Uh, there are no fins. Whereas the Gigabyte uses a hybrid uh, heat sink, which is uh, which is like half solid aluminium. Um, but that, even that has like slots cut through it to allow airflow through to to a set of um, proper fins which are placed on the on the back of the heatsink, and uh, that makes in the benchmarks this card has not only the best power delivery but the card runs the coolest out of all of those cards. So that is why I went for uh, an Aorus Master uh, rather than going for um, an MSI or a, I, originally I was going to get a Tai Chi Ultimate, uh, which is. Uh, a little bit more expensive than this. It comes in around uh, 290. Did I, in fact, did I put that one? Yeah, uh, oh no, it's, yeah. Because I was going to go for the MSI and then I was like, as soon as the uh, the, the 9900 came out, uh, as soon as the 9900 came out, I started looking at the boards and I was like, my first, first kind of gut reaction was, I'm going to go with the Tai Chi Ultimate. But the thing is, the Tai Chi Ultimate, about 50 bucks of that price, uh, comes from the uh, 10 gigabit ethernet option that's on that card. Uh, well, it's not, it's not optional on the card, but it's a, it gives you the option to have 10 gigabit ethernet, which to be honest, I am not gonna use, right? So that's like 50 bucks wasted. So, uh, but as, as soon as I started looking into the cords, it really is a no brainer. You want a gigabyte card and just get the, the, the best one you can afford is basically the, the answer. So that's the, that's the card. Now, huh, um, the RAM, yeah, 64 gig, um, 3200, we've talked about that. We've talked about the storage. Uh, we've talked about the card. Okay, so that was plan B. And then something happened. <laughs> Corsair released this. 
This is the uh, the Corsair H115i, well there's the 115 and the 100i uh, platinum coolers. And they are full of RGB bling, right? And my first impression was, yeah, not interested because I'm not interested in the looks. It's a, it's a freaking black case that just sits on my desk and I, I don't care about that. Uh, which is why there's like no RGB anywhere in my, in my plans. And then I saw the benchmarks on this cooler. This cooler, or this series, I should say, this series of, of coolers, the Platinum series of coolers, the, the 100i and the 115i, are really awesome. Now, before, before this new generation of Platinum coolers, the coolers, and the coolers from, um, from NZXT, from Corsair or whatever, most of them come from the same manufacturer, which is Acetec. But they've sw um, Corsair have switched manufacturers. I can't remember the, na the, the name of the new ma manufacturer off the top of my head. But they've extended the size of the cold plate. So the, 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 pump, is, uh, the pump cold plate is slightly bigger. The pump is improved. And basically, it is several degrees cooler than pretty much anything, right? Uh, to, I think to beat these, you're going to have to go to like open loop cooling. So it's like custom cooling loops. And if you if you if you don't know what those are, oh, go on, go and look at uh, go go and look that up on like Jay's Two Cents. You'll see some of the some of the freaking awesome stuff that he comes up with with uh, with open loop cooling. Uh, but anyway, if, if we're talking about um, all in ones AIOs, CLCs, closed loop cooling. So this is a this is a an AIO because it's all in one. It just comes all in one piece. It's closed loop, so you can't add any other bits to it. It's just a sealed unit. Uh, if we're talking about Talking about this, these new platinum coolers are just, they're awesome, they're off the charts. And because of the heat of the 9900, temperature is something that I've been paying like really close attention to across the board. So I, you know, I'm going, I want to go for the best cooler that I can get. I've gone for the coolest motherboard I can get. I've gone for like, um, I, I want the coolest case that I can get. So, so it makes sense for me to, to get one of these new cards. So let's, um, let's look at what I ended up getting, right? So this is, this is the final build minus one component that we'll talk about in the ultimate build. So the final build, <clears throat> it's, a, it's a, a 9900. Now, some of you will, will spot this and I'll talk about that in a second. Yeah, interesting. Uh, so yeah, the Corsair H150i RGB Platinum AIO liquid cooler. There's only one problem with this component it doesn't exist yet. <laughs> they've released the H100i, they've released the H115i, they've actually released both of those at the same time. Those were released like a month ago or so. Um, but they haven't released the, the, the 150i. They've got the 150i Pro, but they haven't got the, the, the Platinum version yet. So that is really what I am waiting on. But when I started to look at that, I was like, okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna have this this RGB stuff in there. And then I started looking at the RGB stuff. And I was like, well, what's the difference in price between like Vengeance RGB Pro and, um, and just the, the, Ven the, the Vengeance LPX memory? And what I found was that the memory prices are kind of all over the place. Now, when I bought this, and I actually paid 562 pounds for this, which in, in the US would be $562 pretty much, uh, which was, it, it, it just the price suddenly dropped on Amazon by like I don't know seventy eighty dollars just like one day it just suddenly dropped because it had been up in the six fifties or whatever when it was up in the six fifties and the uh, the thirty six hundred memory was up at like the the eight fifties I was like two hundred bucks yeah I might do that I might go for the thirty six and then one day it just dropped and I was like no nope, I can't justify spending three hundred bucks for you know an extra 400 megahertz it's just it just doesn't make sense so I, I went with that and then i checked what the price of the lpx was uh, at the time and the the lpx was like 644 so <laughs> to get and, and there's no difference between like the timings or anything on those memories so it's it's exactly the same memory so i'm paying i'm paying like 80 bucks less and i get rgb 
right? And this is not the um, the plain RGB. This is the RGB Pro. I think the plain RGB memory has like eight uh, LEDs on. The RGB Pro has has twelve. So you get more more seamless colours. It, 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 it's it's pretty freaking awesome, and it's all addressable, of course. So you get these wonderful light patterns. Uh, you can do so many cool effects with these. Although, as far as RGB kit is concerned, I'm I kind of don't like the rainbow stuff. I think I'm pretty sure that my case my case is going to end up being like uh, it's probably going to be like a pulsing white and blue kind of if, kind of look. That, I think that's what it's going to end up being. But um, like when I actually get this, I will be posting like some shots of this so that you can see how it ends up. I might even do a build video. I don't know at this. I can't say for sure if I'm going to do a build video. I might. We'll see. So so what's changed with this? Well, the only thing that's uh, that's changed is um, the cooler, uh, the chip, which I'll talk about in a second. But I looked at the RGB RAM. That was cheaper. And then I was like, well, hang on. Like, like if I was going to do an RGB system, um, like, what about an RGB case? And I looked around at cases. And as soon as you start getting into the RGB, the, there are a lot of RGB cases in there. You know, tempered glass and all that kind of stuff. Um, but the one that stood out to me, like, I mean, for me, had like head and shoulders above the rest, was the Corsair Obsidian 500D. RGB SE. Now, thermally, is it thermally the best case out there? Uh, no. But if you're using a liquid cooler, um, and, and and you're sticking some extra fans on it, then to be honest, at that point, uh, the difference between like most cases is going to be negligible. Unless it's a unless it's an actually a bad airflow case. This is kind of a medium airflow case. So um, it's, it, it's just not going to be an issue. So I took a look at this, and this thing is $260 retail price. Like manufacturer's re recommended retail price. And I was like, 260 bucks? No, I'm not paying 260 bucks for a case. I'm not, I, I'm not paying for like a load of RGB bling. Uh, but then I looked on Amazon, um, and again, it was around the, around the Black Friday sales. And it was on sale for $184.99. And I was like, $184, hang on a second, $184.99. Now, I've been looking at uh, a, a Define R6, which is like, you know, $144. So hang on a second, that's only like 40 bucks more. So what do I get for my 40 bucks? So for my 40 bucks, and by the way, I've already saved like 80 bucks on, on buying my, my RAM. Although RAM prices ever since have been really bouncing around. And I think it's partly to do with um, what's going on in China because there are price fixing allocate allegations. And they're forecasting that RAM prices are going to come down uh, like first quarter next year. But it seems like, like some of that is happening now. Pro re RAM prices have been really bouncing around. Uh, if we take a look at this, this, um, I mean, look at the difference in prices. Like scan. It's got this for like 550 now, whereas on Amazon it's like 630. That's a hell of a difference in price. And if you if, look, this is it's been bouncing around all over the place, you know. So so 620, then it's um it's like 670. So it just like goes up 50 bucks and then drops back 50 bucks. And now, on at least on Scan, you can get it for 550. Why did I pay 560? So so yeah. Uh, RAM prices are all over the place. So you might find like like the LPX memory. I've I've actually seen the LPX memory cheaper than 550 uh, since I actually bought this. But like I said, when I bought this, this was like um, the, the LPX was like six, whatever it was, 630 or something. Anyway, so yeah, so I looked at this case and then it was like, okay, so what am I getting for my extra 40 bucks? Now, the 500D RGB SE case from Corsair is pretty freaking awesome. Uh, looks wise, uh, you've got uh, tempered glass panels on both sides. Um, they are hinged, and I that I really like. And they're held in place with uh, with magnets at the front. So, and and you can lift the um, the the doors off. So, like panels wise, love it. I hate I hate the panels, the glass panels which are held on with thumb screws. I think they look awful. 
Uh, there are some really lousy latching mechanisms that some suppliers have for the cases. So for this for me, as far as the as far as the side panels were concerned, tick the boxes. Then you've got um, the case fans. The case fans are of course from Corsair, and they're the new um, LL uh, line of uh, fans. And the Corsair fans are very good quality. So so then it's like mm, so I'm getting three LL fans in this case. Take, take a look at this. It's freaking, uh, this case is just awesome. I do, I do really, really like this case. These are the, these are the hinge doors. Um, so these fans, these three fans alone, if you buy a pack of those three fans, they're like $67, I think, at the moment. But not only that, you get um, a, a, a fan hub, which is not just a fan hub. It's uh, also an RGB hub. And it's called it's called the Commander. Uh, I think it's called the is it called the RGB Commander? I'm not sure, but that will support up to six fans, and it means oh, and it'll support up to six fans uh, plus your cooler, uh, so you can control your your pump cooler, and you can also uh, control if you wanted to add like some uh, um, RGB uh, strips and whatever you could have like uh, bottom lighting or whatever. Uh, it handles all of that, and that's like another fifty bucks. So, like you're getting a good, I think, certainly a good fifty bucks worth of extra value on top of the um, the, the the Define R6. So for me, this like when I saw that it was like right like seventy bucks off the no eighty bucks off the uh, the manufacturer price, I was like, this is a no-brainer. I am getting one of those. So yeah, so that's what I got. And it comes with a, a nice front panel. It's got um, 3.1, two 3.1 um, USB ports, and also a 3.1 uh, Gen 2 Type C port, which uh, which is really important. And of course your uh, your headphone jack, which uh, again for me is kind of important. So uh, yeah, so suddenly I was look. I'd gone from this boring black case literally just a black box to suddenly hang on a second I've got this like all singing all dancing RGB fest going on with tempered glass and dancing lights uh, and it just it wasn't costing me any more money like so um, this one this was costing me like 2500 now this is um, yeah this is like this is like 2500 the final spec that I'm going with is like 2800 Now, the $300 difference there is because instead of going with an ordinary 9900K, I'm going with uh, a pre-binned. Now, this is, for, for those of you who don't know who De Bauer is, De Bauer is uh, a, a, like, he's a professional overclocker, an extreme overclocker. I mean, this guy like overclocks with like using like liquid, liquid nitrogen and stuff like that. Uh, really extreme stuff. But... Uh, he works for a company called Case King, and they pre-bin CPUs. So what they do is, in, instead of instead of running, you know, taking your chances with the silicon lottery, they actually pre-test CPUs and they sort them by uh, like how good they are, you know. So so I've gone for the best one that they do, which is um, this thing will will definitely overclock to 5.1 gigahertz. And the, the, the key thing here is that it will clock to 5.1 gigahertz at reasonable voltages. Uh, when this turns up, I'm hoping that this is gonna overclock to 5.1 gigahertz at around 1.25 volts. It'll probably be a little bit more than that. You know, maybe yeah, 1.27 or something like that. But, but still reasonable voltages. Certainly, I'm hoping below 1.3. And also, this is gonna be delidded and the, the, the thermal interface material, uh, the TIM, is gonna be replaced with uh, liquid metal. Now, could I have done that myself? Um, there's a big difference between the previous generation, the 8700K, and the new ninth gen series of, chi of chips. These are soldered, and that makes a big difference. Uh, removing the old thermal paste was literally like put some alcohol on a cloth and just like rub it off. Uh, the solder, you have to like actually get it off with like a blade. And one slip and you've got a dead chip on your hands. 
it's um, it's not so easy. So I am paying a 300 quid, uh, $300 premium to Case King and De Bauer to have him delete my chip, which is going to mean that the thing is probably going to be running something like 8 to 12 degrees cooler than it otherwise would. It, like Even if I won the silicon lottery and got a really good chip that would clock to 5.1 at a decent voltage, um, it's still going to be hotter than if I get it delidded. So I wanted it, to, uh, I wanted it, you know, to be guaranteed really good overclock and delidded. So, and if you if you if you're interested in that, you're interested in the in the uh, solder versus paste versus liquid metal. Uh, De Bauer has got plenty of videos on uh, on YouTube on these on these topics. In fact, if you just look for like De Bauer uh, delid 9900K, you'll go straight to it. So, so yeah, and it's like the three, I really am denied about this, but I was like, I have gone to such pains to get like the coolest components for everything that I'm getting, right? I've got the, I've got the coolest motherboard. I've got, you know, the, the best cooler. I've got a, a case, which is going to be as cool as anything that's going to be out there. Um, so yeah, why don't I just like spend the extra 300 bucks? And of course I saved like 300 bucks by not going to the 3600 memory. Um, so I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do it. Now I know a lot of people out there will probably say, that you've wasted your money. You've wasted your money. She's just got a regular one. It's, you know, it's not gonna be it. The thing is, not only do I, I want this to be able to run at these speeds, but I don't want the case to sound like there's a hurricane going off in the background when I'm recording. So I want this to run at at least five gig when the fans are not maxed out. So that's really important to me. So uh, so getting this to be the absolute coolest it can possibly be is a big deal. All right, so so that's the, that's the chip. Um, I am waiting for that to be delivered. That's why this is not emboldened. These are the two components that I don't have. All the rest of it I've bought, I've got in my possession and I'm waiting to do the build. The, um, the, the issue is uh, this, I'm still waiting for this to arrive. And that's because obviously they do these to spec, you know, or oh, sorry, they do, they, they make these to order. And I guess coming up to Christmas, De Bauer's obviously a bit busy. Uh, De Bauer, if you happen to watch this video, I'm sure you won't, but if you happen to watch this video, will you make my freaking chip, please? Thank you. Um, oh, and Merry Christmas. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the, the second problem is the cooler. I've got to wait for them to, they haven't even announced this yet. I've got to wait for them to announce this and then, uh, but I will pre-order this, like seriously. I, I would normally advocate never pre-order a product, but this I'm going to pre-order because I already know it's going to be awesome. Um, just because the, 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 the 110 and the 115 are awesome, um, this is going to be using the same component, so it's going to be awesome. I will double check that obviously before I pre-order. But uh, Now, I'm guessing that this is going to be about I think it's probably. I think I'm probably going to be able to pick one up for about 180 bucks, um, judging judging by the pricing from the like the 115i Pro to one i i uh, 115i Platinum. I'm guessing that this is going to be somewhere between 180 to 200 bucks. So, but I really think it's worth waiting for that. And if you like, if you when you're putting a, a, a something together, you'll find that like each component, like the case. You know, if you can get the case to be, say, five degrees cooler, and you can get your motherboard to be five degrees cooler, and you can get your cooler to be five degrees cooler, and you can get your chip to be five to ten degrees cooler, right, you add them all up, that's actually a hell of a lot of cooling. And it can make a massive, massive difference to how much you can overclock, and if you do overclock, how much noise your case is going to make uh, with all the fans running. So, so yeah. That's, um, so that is what I am going with, guys. And it's, I'm literally just waiting for, the, for my uh, 9900 to turn up and for, the, um, for the, the 150i RGB Platinum to be announced. And then I will be building, and I can't freaking wait to do this because Transport Fever, for, for Transport Fever fans who've, who've happened to have watched this far, uh, I am kind of desperate to get back to Transport Fever, but I'm really waiting for this to come along because my, my frame rates are so, so not great at the moment. Uh, I'm 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 back down to to like the the 20 frames per second, 20 to 25 frames per second, which is kind of 
it's just about bearable for making like building videos, but I want to start getting on to the, like the ride videos. And to be honest, the ride videos at 20 frames, 20 frames per seconds just don't look good enough. So yeah, so I'm really desperate to get this PC. Um, is there anything? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, so we're, we're still even if you even if you add in the the 650 bucks for the for the GTX 1080, right? That still means we're at like three what? So three three and a half thousand. So hang on a second. Where, where's this four and a half thousand dollar PC, Sky? You've been it's clickbait. It's not real. Uh, well. Uh, I talked earlier about RTX and the RTX cards, these ridiculously overpriced uh, RTX cards, which which basically they're like a 25% improvement on the previous gen on the on the Pascal cards, the the, the 10 series cards, so like the 1080 Ti, the the 2080 Ti is probably about 25% improvement. Uh, you might get slightly better improvements when they actually start uh, implementing some of the features that are on the card, like the deep learning and stuff like that, but. Uh, ray tracing at the moment. There's only one game out that even uses ray tracing. Um, and I think the next game that's coming out isn't coming out until like February, which is, um, what is it, Metro Exodus or something? So, yeah, the whole, the whole ray tracing thing is just a waste of time. But eventually I am going to want to upgrade from my, from my 1080. I am guessing that within the next two years and and I'm kind of betting that it's probably going to be within the next 12 months. But I, like, if I had to lay money, I would say 12 to 18 months, I am going to want to upgrade to a 2080 Ti. Um, and I'll probably be moving up from 1080p gaming to either 1440 or more probably 4K. Now, at the moment, I, in fact, I, I would say 4K. I, I don't think I'll go to 1440p. Um, simply because like, if you're getting a monitor... If you're doing either, t if, if you're doing 1080p, um, or sorry, if you're doing 4K gaming, but you want to be able to downscale it to 1080p for people, because some people aren't going to have the bandwidth to watch 4K videos, so they're going to be watching in 1080p. If you scale from 4K down to 1080p, then it's literally four pixels become one pixel. Whereas if it's, t if it's uh, 1440p, then you're going from like, like two and a half pixels to one pixel. And the same with the upscaling, it's like one pixel goes to four as opposed to one pixel going to like one and a half times one and a half, which is like, yeah. So you, you'll get better upscaling and downscaling between 1080p and uh, 4K than you will with 1080p to 1440 or 1440 to 4K. I mean, it's not, it's not huge. I'm not saying it's that it'll look horrible. It's just, it'll look a little bit better if it's, uh, 1080p and because it's just doubling you're, you're doubling the length doubling the, the the height or the height and the width I should say so yeah so at some point over the next two years uh, I'm 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 sure that the the gaming community is going to move towards f um, 4k gaming at the moment what is it like 60 to 70 percent of the gaming community is still on uh, on, on 1080p uh, certainly the the vast majority of people watching gaming on uh, on YouTube are watching at 1080p so it do, like right now it doesn't make any sense to move but I think that that change is coming um, in, in the future so I want to be able to, um, to to have a system that kind of budgets for that so what card am I going to go to well let's look at the ultimate build everything is the same except the card now there are two cards that I'm looking at and I have not made my mind up between the two, and, and I'm going to tell you why. But it's going to be, I think it's going to be one of those two cards, unless they come out with a new card within the next, say, 18 months, which is which is possible. So I might be skipping this generation, but the um, the Gigabyte, and again, I'm sticking with Gigabyte. Oh, now this is a good, I meant to talk about this, this is a good point. RGB, um, whilst the RGB controller on there is, on, on the uh, Corsair case is great, and it means all of my um, cooling components can be run with one piece of software, which is the Corsair IQ software. And that will run, it'll run all my LED stuff on my Corsair components, and it'll run all my cooling on all my components. Awesome, fantastic. But some of my 
uh, RGB stuff, some of my lighting effects are not. Of course they're. Now my, my RAM is, and my uh, cooler will be, and the case fans all will be, that's fine. But, but not, um, not the motherboard. Uh, what else? Is it just the motherboard? I think it's just the motherboard. I think I, oh no, the motherboard and the RTX card, if I get an RGB RTX card. Um, so I wanted to keep it down to like the absolute minimum. And if I do it this way, if I get a gigabyte card, I, I mean, like I probably would have gone, like if I, if I hadn't got this setup and I didn't care, I would probably go with an MS, MSI uh, Trio, the, uh, the 2080 Ti Trio gaming card. Uh, I think that's probably the best bang for buck value card that's out there. There, are, I mean, there are plenty of good cards out there. To be honest, the 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 for the win three cards and uh, yeah, there's loads of them. Anyway, so so yeah, um, so that's why I've gone for the for the gigabyte. And there are two choices, uh, and this is where it does get a bit uh, a bit interesting. So this is the this is the 2080 Ti Aorus Extreme. This is, with it, like hands down, no question, the best looking RGB card that's out there. It looks freaking awesome. The problem with this card is that if you were going to use this card uh, and you actually wanted to be able to look at it, then you've got to mount it vertically. Now, this is a triple slot card. Now, the case that I've got does have vertical, slot, vertical mounting slots but it's only got two slots, right? So first of all, it wouldn't fit. And even if it was a triple slot, uh, you'd, be, you'd have the fans right up against the glass of the case, which means the card's gonna, gonna run hot, uh, which is not a good thing. And so, yeah, so there is a way to do it. There is a, there is a mod that you can get, which um, it actually uses up all seven of your expansion slots, but it does allow you to mount this card horizontally, um, but it's much, much closer to the motherboard. So I would be able to, to, to cool it adequately and it would be fine. And to be honest, I can't see how I would ever want to use any of the expansion slots because the motherboard has all the IO that I could possibly want. I don't need any sound cards or networking cards or anything like that. So I think it would be a pretty safe, safe option. So that's option one, right? The second option is to go with, uh, again, an Aorus Extreme card, but this one comes with its own all-in-one cooler. And this is the, uh, the Aorus 2080 Ti Water Force Extreme. And this thing is awesome. Now this is probably another probably another hundred bucks. So this is probably going to be about around, it's probably going to be around 15, 1600 bucks, uh, at least initially. And it's, uh, it's just a, a, an extreme, but with um, liquid cooling. Now, I, I, I'm, I, I'm going to go back for a second because one thing I didn't talk about was, um, was the, just the fan configuration. Now, what I'm going to do, uh, assuming assuming that they announce eventually the H150i uh, Pro RGB Platinum, this is a 360 uh, mil uh, radiator, which will which will just fit in the front of the case. So that's going to go on the front of the on the front of the case. It's already got RGB. So I'll take the three RGB fans that come with the case, and I'll be placing uh, two in the top and one at the rear for exhaust. Now. Because I've got three fans at the front going through a radiator and three fans uh, exhausting, that would probably give me negative pressure. In fact, you can say almost certainly that's going to give you uh, negative pressure because there will be a little bit of resistance uh, at the front because of the uh, because of the tempered glass front panel. Um, the I mean the, the, there are big slots at the side, so it's not like it's not like really restricted, but you are going to have some restrictions. There's a dust filter there for a start, which is going to uh, provide some uh, some resistance. And uh, and then you're blowing through a radiator. So even with uh, really good static pressure fans, you're going to get some resistance to that. And then you're going to have three extraction fans, which are going to be running, you know, like full on. So you're going to end up with negative pressure in your case. And typically you want, like ideally in a case, you want neutral pressure, maybe slightly positive. Um, but... You can you can actually handle that because I've got the um, 
the, the controller and the IQ software, I'm going to be able to tailor the fans. So all I'll do is just turn down the, um, the RPMs on the extraction fans to balance out that pressure. So for anybody who was interested in whether, I, whether my case would be positive or negative pressure, that's what I'll be doing. And obviously, uh, because the, the case comes with three uh, LED fans and the, uh, the cooler, the H150i uh, RGB Platinum, comes with three 120 millimeter LED fans. I've got six LED fans in the case, which is kind of perfect. And because of that, like everything's RGB, but I haven't, I haven't really, I haven't explicitly paid anything extra to have RGB. Um, so you could say, yeah, well you paid for, you, you paid an extra 40 bucks for the case. Um, yeah, but I probably would have, I, I may well have ended up having to buy some kind of fan hub um, or some kind of lighting hub for uh, if I was getting a Define uh, R6. So I think that would have ended up balancing out. And also the Define R6 I think comes with three 140 mil fans. Now would I really need to add to that? Probably not. But to get the cooling of uh, six fans, um, this is gonna this this case is gonna probably be cooler than a than a than a stock R6. So so yeah, and then like I said, I got uh, the, the the RAM was cheaper. So um, RGB really hasn't co like RGB and tempered glass really hasn't cost me anything, which is which is kind of staggering. So so yeah, so that that kind of wraps up the case. The um, oh I was talking about the. I was talking about the, the, the card, the extreme, the Water Force Extreme. The nice thing about the Water Force Extreme is that I would be able to mount that vertically. And because it doesn't have any fans, because it's water cooled, uh, it doesn't matter if it's sitting like close to the glass at the front of the case. So to be honest, I am totally torn between those two. But whichever way I go, or who knows, by the time I actually get one, maybe it's the next gen or maybe MSI come out with a really awesome card or something that I, that I decide I want to get. Uh, either way, I'm looking at uh, $4,400. Uh, now, if you're saying, hang on a second, you said $4,500. Yeah, add Windows onto that. <laughs> You've got $4,500. Uh, and it'll probably be actually be a little bit more than that because, I, you know, at some point, I'm probably going to bite the bullet and get some, get some like really decent um, hard drive long-term storage, which will probably be for anybody who's interested. I'll probably get something like a Seagate Iron Wolf, um, like a, an eight or 10 terabyte drive, um, which will cost, what? Well, like, I think a 10 gig drive is, is something like 250 bucks or something. So yeah, this is gonna end up being at least a four and a half thousand dollar PC uh, in the future. Right now, Right now it's um, what two nine plus six fifty for my ten eighty, so it's like a three and a half thousand going up to a four and a half thousand plus, uh, and like I said, that's without that's without Windows at the moment. So guys, whoo man, I have been talking nonstop for a very long time. I hope that you've enjoyed this deep dive into uh, into my PC, uh, what I'm what I'm going to get, why I'm getting it, why I'm getting the bits that I'm getting, and how they all hang together. Uh, I can't wait to see your comments on this video. I think this is going to be really interesting. I think this is probably going to be uh, a comment section I'm going to be reading for a while. So guys, leave me a comment. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you for the next one. Peace out.